Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Snapmaker U1 Tool Changer 3D Printer. And let me get this out of the way before someone in the comments accuses me of swimming in sponsor money. This is not a paid review. We bought this U1 with our own hard earned cash, waited through the Kickstarter queue like everyone else. And yes, refresh the tracking page way too many times. Nine, six, nine. So, what's the U1? It's Snapmaker's first four tool head tool changer 3D printer. They launched it on Kickstarter and absolutely broke the internet. Over 20,000 units sold and more than 20 million US dollars raised. Clearly, there are a lot of people out there curious about this machine. Or they all just really wanted four print heads and didn't know why. The pre-order price is 849 US dollars, which is the kind of number that makes you raise an eyebrow and say, okay, where's the catch? So here's what's happened when ours arrived. We've had the machine for about three weeks, running almost non-stop, basically treating it like a print farm intern. And failures, almost none. Miss Park tool heads, zero. Getting stuck meat print, not once. But before you crown this thing the new 3D printing messiah, we have seen people online with issues. A few tool head problems, some alignment issues. So the question is, did we get lucky? Or are we living in a weird alternative timeline where our unit just works flawlessly for no reason whatsoever? We don't know yet, but so far, thumbs up. Print quality looks solid. I'd call it mid-range and I mean that in a good way. The layers look clean, consistent and it handles tool changes better than some printers handle a single extruder. Watching four tool heads take turns printing is like watching a well-rehearsed dancing routine. Except the dancers don't complain, take breaks or demand better lighting. Now let's talk about the Prusa XL because you can't compare these two. The XL costs about five times more which is the kind of price difference you'd expect if one of them printed with gold filament. And I mean real gold. But in our experience, the Excel didn't always finish prints. Toolheads didn't always pick up or park perfectly. And for that price, you really want a machine that's at least as reliable as a microwave. Seriously, when's the last time your microwave failed to park the turntable? Meanwhile, the U1 has been shockingly consistent. Again, your mileage may vary. But so far, the U1 has been quietly doing its thing like a printer that didn't get the memo that it's supposed to struggle. Okay, time for the serious questions. The U1 uses pogo pins for toolhead electrical contact. Pogo pins are great until they're not. How long will they last? Nobody knows. Snapmaker hasn't given a lifespan number yet. So we're basically rolling the dice. Same with the mechanical parts. Are they rated for thousands of hours? Or will the printer one day wake up and say, yeah, I'm retired. Tool changes naturally put more stress on moving parts. So longevity is a big question mark. We'll be watching for any issues and if the printer ever decides to explode dramatically, we'll definitely get it on camera for you. There's also a ton of hype around this machine. People still want to get their hands on it, even though pre-order wait times are, let's say, character building. Snapmaker has promised to make the U1 fully open sourced by March 2026. 
That means advanced users will be able to modify the UI, firmware and probably make the printer do things that it's never meant to do. Right now, you can't SSH into it, which is a tragedy for the tinkerers out there. But Snapmaker says that should come later, fingers crossed. We also printed this top hat enclosure we found on printables. Ours was printed in ASA on the H2D toolhead and assembly was super easy. The difference in noise is huge. Without it, the U1 sounds like it's trying to escape into another dimension every time it changes filament. With the top hat much quieter, still not silent, but at least your neighbors won't think you're building a small helicopter in your living room. Plus, it helps with high temps materials like ABS and ASA which is great because nothing ruins your day like watching an ABS print warp into a modern art. Now, before we continue, let's talk about something Snapmaker included. Well, exists. The camera. Look, I appreciate the idea. A built-in camera sounds great on paper, but in practice, the U1's camera is running at basically one frame per second. If you're used to the cameras on modern machines, you know what a live stream looks like. Smooth, real time, you can actually see what's happening. The U1's camera is more like, here is a picture and here is another one. And maybe one more if you're lucky. It's not a live feed, it's more like a slideshow of your print's live choices. It's fine for checking whether the print is still on the bed. But if you're hoping to watch a failed spaghetti monster grow in real time, yeah, that's not happening. So, should you buy the Snapmaker U1? Honestly, it's too early to give a definitive verdict. We've only had it for three weeks. But based on our time with it, it prints well, it's been very reliable and for the price, it's kind of ridiculous. Is it too good to be true? Maybe. But we're not ready to take that pessimistic route yet. We'll keep printing until something breaks. Or until the pogo pins unionize. If you want updates, hit subscribe, drop a comment and let us know what you want us to test next. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!